Hi dearest, today I'm going to be taking you on a step-by-step -step guide on how to make this pretty Asher K cap. When I say step-by-step, -step, it means we're going to start from molding the cap and how we make the things that go around, the brooches, every single thing. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. So sit back and tighten your seat belts. Before we get into that, let us see who won our last week challenge. And it is Chantala Bozo. Congratulations. Please do contact us in the event craft reception and collect your gift, which is Fascinator Class 1. All you need to do is go to the description of this video and you will find the link. Now on to our class for today or should i say tutorial so here's what we'll be needing we'll be needing our stiffener your bowl of water your mold your wording or padded you'll be needing a nylon to spread on the table also a nylon to put in your mold your oil base you also be needing that then you'll be needing um the material you'll be putting on the neat brighter satin will do at this point then you also be needing your tom tags scissors measurement tape so the first thing you want to do is measure your mold now this is the shape of the mold that you would be needing for that and um, if you, whatever measurement it is you just add two inches ahead of that and you're going to be cutting out your material to that size why is two inches is so that it will go underneath because that's where you're going to be putting your tom tags so remember you measure the mold and you add two extra inches to it so i'm going to be taking my bridal satin and also my wording or interfacing or padded depending on what you call it and i'm going to be cutting it at that measurement same measurement it's going to be a perfect square so we'll be cutting our bridal satin into by 10 by 5 inches by 10 by 5 inches once you're done with that what you need to do is place the bridal satin on top of the padded interfacing wording this would help you also cut it that same measurement so you could measure out the same thing and cut it again 10.5 by 10.5 all right hope you understand all right so the next thing we're going to do is to cover up our mold now this to protect the mold or heart block depending from not spoiling you know what water can do to wood so that's why we cover it with a nylon bag you can make use of film also um it's film that they call it isn't it yes that's what they call it all right so do let me know in the comment section below what you use to cover your mold if you already do that then you use your oil base i make use of hair cream tell me what you make use of to cover your oil base now oil base is to ensure that after you have molded your mold comes out perfectly well just like when you're baking a cake that you have to use butter and the cake pan so the cake comes out is exactly the same thing we do here so once you do the top you would also turn on the knit and do a, a small part on on the knit like so and that's because you're going to fold your mold that way so you also want it to come out so keep watching and learn if you cannot find any of these materials in your local store i'll be putting the amazon aliexpress link and also a group of um, suppliers and telegram group i'll be putting their links in the description of this video it may not happen today but i'll surely upload that very soon now the next thing i'm going to do is take my stiffener i'm going to be mixing it so that i would use it to mold the heart now you, can, you have stiffener, you have top bond. If you want to know which is the best to use for various ones, that's my opinion. Do let me know in the comment section below and I would work on a video for that. All right, so now I'm going to be mixing it with water. <laughs> I was given a bucket of water. Remember this, I'm having, I'm training in a vocational center. That's why also the view is like this. So I'm mixing, this is the consistency you need. All right, so what I'm going to do is take my bridal satin and I'm going to dip it into the mixture and i'm gonna squeeze it like so bring out all the juice from it <laughs> all right so once the juice has gone out the next thing you need to do is to open it up like so and you know you're going to be checking since the brighter satin you have the smooth part that's the shining part is smooth the smooth part is the part you're going to make to 
be on the face of your mold or heart block do you understand because that's the part you would see when you're going to wear it the other part will be the part that will touch the mold so it's the smooth part that faces the mold so that's what i'm doing now and then i take my padded wording interfacing or i think tick foam and i dip it into the mixture ensure that it touches every area okay that's what i'm doing so once i'm done with that the next thing i squeeze out the jewels also but this time around not as much as the bridal satin some jewels will still be left <laughs> all right then then i take it and i put it on top of the bridal satin then i turn it like so and the next thing you need to do is to ensure that all the parts are going to touch be above as in to give some space on top because you're going to be putting your thumb tags on top so that's what i'm doing like so so if you have been molding with me before you know what we're gonna shout right now as we put our thumb tags and that's what are you shouting with me not south east and west yes you have to put your thumb tags first of all not south east and west and as you put the south or rather the west you drag to put the east then you put your knot then you drag also the other material to put your south now that ensures that you have a perfect finish your material will be so smooth on your mold you will be amazed by yourself all right <laughs> so let's continue so that's what i'm doing right now and when i finish you will see the next phase now all this then processes joined together ensures a smooth finish okay so after you've done that you're going to grab the part between each thumb tags like so can you see how i'm dragging it and how it's becoming smooth already oh amazing then you start putting your thumb tags to hold it down so i'm going to be doing this all the way around so keep watching and learning to forgive the jumping around for the video it will soon all end so can you see how smooth it is oh very lovely isn't it so now we're going to take it out in the sun to dry so now this is the next day or i mean next week it's already dry and now we're taking out the paint you take out the paint and let me introduce you what we're going to use to make the ashro cake cap the other item so you could be using your padded same thing that we used to mold it then you have your elastic band this thin one the very thin one that's it there okay so that's what's one of the ones we're going to be using and we have um also um the hat wire this hat wire is what you're using because it's a small fascinator base that we made then these are ashoki half pack is what we're going to be making use of then these are some flower trimmings that i got also that we're going to be making use of uhu gum your pins did I make use of the paints again? I don't think I did. Then you have your thumbtacks, which we used previously. Then pegs, you will see why we need pegs very soon. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have our scissors. Then we're going to also be making use of um, the um, Peter Sham. That Peter Sham. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is to cut out some excess from the mold i haven't removed it yet but this is going to enable me to remove it then i'll put my hand through and i'll start using my fingernails to bring it out like so all the way around after a while it becomes easy and it you can drag it out like so so next thing i just trim out a little piece especially that part that has rusted i think i did a video concerning that rust yeah then you put in your hat wire i'm putting in my hat wire now to go all the way around okay so once it's round like this i've gotten it all the way around i will take my hat wire cutter and cut it off then i would bring it out again just in that same position so that i can tie it now the reason why we're putting hat wire in is so that it is turgid it's not flexible your fascinator base is strong so now i'm placing it back in after tying it and then i use my uhu gum 
all the way around and I start pushing it in now pegs come into place here so that it would hold so I'm going to put the uhu gum all the way around and then peg it as I go along the way and leave it to dry now you need to measure your um, molded fascinator also and that gives me two, um, 10 inches so I'll add two extra that's 12 so I'm going to be cutting my shoki by 12 inches length and you know the width is 6 inches so that means I'm going to be cutting two of it isn't it to get me 12 so I'm cutting one now <laughs> I'm showing you the measurement that is 6 inches this particular shoki is 6 inches then I'm going to cut another one to make it 12 so I'm having a perfect square 12 inches by 12 inches once i'm done i'm going to be taking it to the sewing machine and i'm going to be sewing it like this all the way down okay so now this is it i've sewn it already and i'm going to use it to cover up my fascinator base all right so how i'm going to do it is the same way you mold to have a perfect finishing so first of all, you use your uhu gum and you're going to put it inside the edge like so all the way around. Once I'm done with that, we're going to do the same process as I said again, as our when we were molding. And that's, I'm going to take my pegs this time around, not the torn tags. And I'm going to be doing north, south, east and west. Ensure you are pulling the other part once you peg as in the opposite part, you pull it. And ensure it's also in the midpoint also so you'll be able to have material on both sides so now I'm doing the last one over there like so you can see me dragging it okay then I take in between like so again keep watching and learning Can you see how it looks very lovely if you follow the procedure very smooth no hitches anywhere so the next thing we're going to be cutting is to make our butterfly and that's 20 inches by six inches of course that's the width and we're going to cut two pieces of this in fact four pieces but i'll show you what you do with two pieces which is the same thing you're going to do with the other two piece so this is it now and i'm going to be sewing it um what do you call it um it, using this to cut the other part so it's going to be the same 20 inches by six so i place it on top like so and sew it in the sewing machine down so this is it now finally i would sew this part sew this other part fold it together into two and sew all the areas like so okay now the other thing we i'll get back to that now the other thing we're going to cut again is our padded now this padded is measured 22 inches by 4 inches this is what we're going to use to make that big rope we have two pieces of that to make that two big ropes in front of the fascinator base and then my um ashoki i'll cut it 23 of course the width is six inches it remains at that so i have two pieces also of that because remember we have two gigantic rope in front of the fascinator base so now the next process we're going to be doing is we're going to be making the rope <laughs> starting with the padded so this is how you're going to do it you're going to roll it like so roll it as tight as you can now the fatter you want it the more weight you would need to um, get do you understand instead of making it four probably make it six or eight and also depending on the thickness also so once you roll it like so you sew it okay so i'm going to start sewing from there i'll roll again because you can see all the other parts are not fully rolled so i would roll it again and sew. i'll just ensure that it keeps being rolled like that and sewing and i'm going to do it all the way down so keep watching and learning Remember, before you keep watching and learning, I'm going to do this to the two pieces, but I'm only going to show you what I do to one piece, which of course is replicated in the other piece.
Now once we're done with that, the next thing we need to do is to wrap it up with our ashoke. And how I do mine is I start it at the edge like so and I start rolling it. But the first part I sew, the first part that comes on top of the first part of ashoke that comes upon the rolled padded, I sew it first of all and cut out my piece. And then I start rolling it. Now when you roll it, you have to roll it really tight. You can actually, as you're rolling, be putting uhu gum so that it sticks. Or you even make use of um, candle glue. This would come out perfectly. If you use candle glue, just tiny, make sure you bring out tiny piece. So once I roll it like so to the end, I would also take my needle and thread and I'm going to sew the edge also. Remember, I'm making two pieces of this. All right, so now I'm sewing the edges completely. Now you can see I have my two pieces. The next thing I want to do is to join the two pieces together. Now when you're joining the two pieces, you also need to check the two to know which part you would want to show outside and the part you want to show inside of course the neatest part will show outside so now i'm sewing the two together like so just doing kind of like a hemming stitch joining the two of them together once i'm done i would also sew the tip and it's firmly joined together and i use my hand and kind of you know make it roll like that Okay, so now I'm cutting out the excess that is inside the molded fascinator and then I'm sewing my, um, that big rope, giant rope, I don't know what you would call it, to my fascinator base. Now, I know you already know me that I like to do sewing if it's possible because I know that if you use glue after a while, it could separate, especially if it gets heat by sun for so long so this is the way i sew it all the way around so that no matter what for years to come your ashoke cap is intact so remember also i'm sure you must have seen that i used glue in the spaces yes because i did mine without gluing at the long run so the parts that were dropping out and um, coming out i used glue to put them in place so keep watching and learning See how beautiful it looks. Great, isn't it? Okay, so we're done with that. The next thing we're going to do is to get the material that we used to make our butterfly. I showed you how to do that. So what we're going to do now is to just pleat it from the diagonal. That's the corner that you saw me um, holding. So I'm going to pleat it all the way down. Remember I said that we have two pieces of this. Remember? Remember the butterfly was cut 20 inches by 12 inches. I hope you remember that okay so now i'm going to pleat it like so then i'll take my needle and thread and sew it remember i'm doing <coughs> excuse me two of them like this keep watching and learning So I have done the second one like so and I'm going to be joining them like so just in the same location can you see how I'm placing I was just trying to see how it would be if I do it like this now nah. okay you just join it side by side like this that other one is not now nah, please will give you a different design anyway but that's not the design we want to make we want to make the design in our YouTube Tom tag Tom Tom Neil please forgive me all right so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the one the thread that remained from the one that I've 
pleated and I'm going to use it to pass through the other one and join it like so. So that's how you make your butterfly. So I'm going to just be sewing it all the way around to make it tight. Keep watching and no, no, no. Oh, that really turned out the beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is join that part to the fastening top base that have joined the big ropes. So when you join it, you're going to ensure that you cover up those edges. Do you understand? You're going to sew the butterfly to cover up the spaces in between. If you can, you can actually extend. If you want to have that rope, um, the giant rope going all the way around, that's fine. But I have mine with that space and I just sew it to cover everything. All right, so keep watching and learning. Now the next thing you want to do is sew your Alice band, not sorry, not Alice band, your elastic band to the Ashoke cap. Now what I did actually was I cut um, 13 inches, that's usually the right one for both um, adults and um, kids, depending on the elasticity anyway, but this elasticity was okay. So this is where I'm sewing it. So I'm going to be sewing at this point, then I'll take it opposite the other side and also do the same. So keep watching and learning. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my pita sham and cover up all the rough edges inside my cap. So when you look at it, oh, it's pretty. You can even wear it upside down. <laughs> That's a joke. But you never can tell. One could try it, you know. All right, so keep watching and learning. After I did that, I took all the trimmings, divided it and started covering all the rough edges. Anyway, I saw some loops, but that was just, in fact, where the hitches came were just close to the um, butterfly and it gave it a lovely design at the end. And that's how I made this Ashoke cup. Oh, it looks so pretty. What do you think? If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you do not want to miss any, 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 any DIY in my video, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. My gift for you for today is to attend the Craft Academy class, Brooch class one, my pioneer class as in that's the first class i created for the Ventcraft academy the first course where you get to learn all those wonderful brushes and flower designs that would stand you out this festive season you can make lapels with it add it to clothes add it to um, make it as brushes add it to turbans hats and various things and guess what i'm giving it to you for today at half price yes you get to pay just three dollars or 500 naira or 10 Ghanaian CDs or 750 CFA or 25 rand.